name is Susan Wood and I come from St Andrews in Fife on the North Sea coast of Scotland. I'm here at the fish factory for a residency for the whole of March. I grew up by the sea, as I've said, and the sea has always been very important in my life. So I chose Stuff Fjorda because it's right by the sea and I also chose it because it's very remote. I've been working for the last two years in Sunderland in the northeast of England on a master's course in glass and my theme there was the shore, everything that's uh, on or beside the shore. So I wanted to continue my exploration of the shore on a different shore, this time in Iceland. And I have been working with things I found on the beach. And obviously I'm not going to be making things out of glass here, but I can use all the skills I learned uh, over the last eight or nine years studying glass. So this huge piece here uh, is a, a wheel, cartwheel, and I have found on the beach um, a lot of kelp or seaweed. You can see here pieces of a drying seaweed. When you find it, it's very soft and squishy, but when it's in the dry, it dries out and becomes almost completely hard. And I thought it would be interesting to make a weaving out of the kelp and the pieces of rope. So you can see here bits of rope which I have untangled. I've taken the rope that I found and I've made it, deconstructed it into lots of separate pieces. And then I made uh, a loop by spreading the, the rope from top to bottom because there are actually already holes in this wheel, so that was very useful. And then for the warp of the uh, that's the, the warp, the, the warping up, the long vertical pieces is the warp, and then the weft, the piece that goes across to make the fabric, um, I used the rope and the kelp. And I tried to also think about the shape of the mountains around us and the way that the rocks collapse into curves and shapes. So actually the kelp, the seaweed, almost looks a little bit like some of the forms that we can see across the fjord where you have the beautiful rock strata there and I really, and you can see here even some shells still stuck to the kelp because the kelp is originally on the seabed and these bits are clinging to the bottom of the sea and the shells are still here. So that was one of the first pieces I made when I was here and my influences were very much people like Richard Long, who does land art. He actually goes to very remote places and often walks, like I like walking along the beach. And then sometimes he picks up pebbles and rearranges them into a long line or a circle or something like that. But he's using what he finds. <coughs> so I was here using what I found um, here and around the shore. And I like the idea of being actually in a remote place and getting to know it very well. And one of the theories behind what I'm doing is called psychogeography, where the geography of a place, the landscape, is very important to the people who are in it and the people who visit it. So for me it was very important to look at the fjord, to walk up and down, to do the same walk lots of times and to see different things every time. So although I'm using the same materials a lot of the time, um, what comes out is often very different because you have the role of chance and you just by chance might find different things each time you go out. So the piece on the back wall, which you can see like a semicircle, um, that was the, the blue part was a gift from Lily, who is also doing the residency here. She found it on her walk, and so I've used it together with the kelp and the rope to just make um, a piece which was fun as well as perhaps looking interesting. So when I was
was collecting the kelp, it actually weighs quite a lot when it's fresh. And I had to think of a way of carrying quite a lot back to the studio. So I found this grill piece of metal. I thought, oh, that'll be very useful. So I piled up the kelp onto the thing and brought it back here. And then when I got it back, I thought, oh, it might be quite interesting just to put the kelp, the seaweed, just put it in some of the bars of the grill. I later found out it's somebody's barbecue tray. <laughs> um, I'm going to put it back in near their garden so they can have it back later. So very much the role of chance is important to me. In this work here, the idea is to show random things that you find when you're out and also random ways of working. And so here I've knitted some of the rope I have knotted some of the pieces of driftwood and other wood that I've used there. So it's a little bit like the theories of Baudelaire, who was interested in wandering around the streets of Paris and just perhaps randomly going down different streets or following people at random. And I like the role of the randomness and the chance. So in quite a lot of my work, I have been experimenting with how things work and the effects you get, for example, from sticking the seaweed onto paper and then making prints, the color graph technique, where you take a range of mixed materials, stick them onto the card and then uh, flatten it down and make a surface from which you can print. For this collar graph, I took pieces of seaweed and bits of the deconstructed rope again and simply glued it onto the card and created a random image. If you look up here, you can see the printed results. The printing then creates the areas where the print sticks onto the raised surface and you get a three uh, um, from a three-dimensional form you get a two-dimensional print so the idea was that I didn't set out to make a landscape or a tree or anything but then when it's done rather like the artist Max Ernst who used quite a lot of frottage or rubbing of surfaces and then looked at the image and decided what he would call the work or what it would be, I did the same really, that I looked and I thought when I'd done it, the seaweed actually looked quite like a tree that's been blown very hard from the main wind direction, which here the main wind is coming from the east. So we have seen on our walks quite a lot of trees which are bent in the wind. And then once I'd made the prints, I could then hand colour parts of them or I could if I wish to use a paint wash over the prints. So I've been trying really, while I've been here, to experiment with printmaking, and I think you've seen quite a number of my efforts at printmaking, and I've also tried to do some painting on non-conventional surfaces like driftwood. So I found a piece of driftwood, um, washed it, sanded it down, and made it nice to feel, and then painted on it. And I think those pieces are not finished yet, so I shall finish them in the course of the next week. I have one more that week left of the residency. And similarly with the paintings that you can see that I've done, I started by bringing with me black canvases. I primed them with black primer, 
because I thought that Iceland is fundamentally black. It's a lava country, and the main color of the soil is black, the rocks. So then I've started to put color on to add things, and I've taken, obviously, a lot of photos during my month here. and then I can work from some of the images, particularly of snow, because the snow is gradually melting, and probably in this last week, there will be less snow than there has been for the other three weeks. So I've tried with photos to capture the images of the things I'm interested in, like ice, or lichens in the snow, or, um, for example, the way that the snow forms patches around the tufts of grass on the hillside. So the other thing I've done is obviously collect lots of stones from the beach and you can see them in my display over there. And again, a random find. Uh, we were given a random advent calendar at the beginning of March because the fish factory had some left over. So I've used the tray from the advent calendar to make my display shape for the pebbles. And really, I've had a lot of fun during my month here. I've experimented with printmaking, with making constructions of things, um, with painting, and simply with photographing and enjoying uh, being here and the atmosphere and the way that the landscape dominates everything. I think every day I've taken different photos. It's just been amazing to see how the, the time of day, whether it's sunrise or sunset, or a windy day, or a very wet day, or where the snow is falling, that every day the weather conditions do alter completely how the landscape looks. And I've been out on one or two short trips from here, as well as our big journey north to Akureyri and Braumann. Uh, right up in the very north of Iceland, but almost all my work is based on uh, the experience of walking up and down the actual fjord here. So in the last week I'm hoping to finish off all the paintings I've been working on and that includes the works on driftwood. And when I go home I'll be back in London and I'm a member of a group called South London Women Artists and I hope to exhibit some of my work with them during the next year or two and I would very much like to do another residency in Iceland because I found it so beautiful, so inspiring and I would like to come back possibly to the west, northwest coast of Iceland but what I really like is the remoteness of being here and the, the beauty of the wild nature and its changing faces and I think I, I would just like to encourage everybody <laughs> to come here to experience it for themselves because it really is a very special place. Yes, you asked me about future plans. Mm -hmm. I think while I've been here, I've enjoyed working with metal in different ways. First of all, the big wheel which I made, but then also making prints from pieces like this rusty old piece of metal I found on the beach or the piece up there on the wall. And I like the idea of making more abstract sculptures from pieces of metal and perhaps using more seaweed. But I think the idea of more metal is something I'd like to work on in the future. And perhaps also building in some of the stones that I found and enjoy.